Welcome back, where we have Dr. Tanya Dahl and Dr. Justin Yannick here on behalf of Renew Ketamine Infusion. Well, welcome both of you to the show. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for, Thanks for having us. So um, before we get into what ketamine infusion is and um, pretty much what your facility is all about, tell me a little bit about yourselves. So yeah, my name is Dr. Justin Yannick. Uh, I trained in emergency medicine actually with Dr. Dahl in residency at UC Irvine. Mm -hmm. And then I did a pain fellowship at Harvard Mass General Hospital. Okay. Um, and then ultimately now I practice both emergency medicine, pain medicine, and then we've started this clinic, Renew Ketamine Infusion. All right, fantastic. And how about you? I'm Dr. Tanya Dahl. Thanks for having us. Um, I trained at UC Irvine in emergency medicine, board certified. Um, also practicing at Mission Hospital in the emergency department, so serving the community in many ways. Okay, so you're already you're at Mission now, serving at uh, ER. Correct. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, let's talk a little about really why ketamine works, mm -hmm. what it is, and, yeah. and how you guys monitor your patients. So, for instance. Ketamine, I've seen, can be used for a lot of different things, and it's been around for a really long time. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what it is made from. Sure. So it's a synthetic molecule. Um, it was developed in the 60s, FDA approved in 1970, um, and it was originally approved as an anesthetic. And it's a very safe anesthetic in the sense that it preserves people's ability to breathe and have a blood pressure. So this was widely used in the battlefield, actually, in the Vietnam War as a way to basically safely transfer um, victims of war from the battlefield back to a medic tent and have them not suffer from their injuries in the meantime. Okay. Dr. Dahl and myself use this routinely in the emergency department to do procedural sedation, to sedate, like let's say a two-year-old that has a laceration that we have to sew up, you give them some ketamine, it dissociates them, and then you can ultimately do this, the suture repair. Okay. So it's been used in multiple indications. For mental health purposes and chronic pain, last 20 years it's been studied and there's an enormous amount of literature to prove its efficacy um, in treating those conditions. Okay. Now you mentioned that you are still working in the ER, so Correct. you're you're seeing the usage of that today. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. But one other thing uh, that you may have seen over the last several years is that there's some people who may suffer from uh, depression and isolation because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, one thing that I was wondering is that if you have a patient um, who who is going to die and then the loved one can't be with that patient. Mm. What are you seeing there and how ketamine could possibly help someone like that? Yeah, so um, the COVID-19 pandemic was hard obviously on everybody in different ways. Um, and being an emergency provider, I not only had to witness the terrible deaths of people that are dying from COVID-19, people that are dying alone, um, but also having to help treat patients that were coming in with um, really severe depression. Um, yeah. People were being isolated, people were lonely, people were scared, people were turning to substances like drugs and alcohol. Yeah. And so these are people that were on lots of medications, maybe had tried multiple antidepressants in the past and nothing was working for them. And so right. there really were two pandemics. There was the COVID-19 pandemic and the mental health crisis that went along right. with it. Right. Um, and so here at Renew Ketamine Infusion, one of the reasons why I decided to build this business with Dr. Yannick is I wanted to not only be able to help people in the acute setting, but also be able to help the other people that were suffering in silence and mm. were just not finding relief. Okay. So um, you've told us that, you've told us what it is from. Now, what does it actually do to help people with depression, isolation, yeah. and a variety of other things that you can treat with it? Yeah. So. Its mechanism of action is, uh, to simplify it basically, is when you have chronic suffering, whether that's from pain or whether that's from depression, we know anatomically that you have a, a reduction in the amount of um, synapses in your brain. Mm -hmm. Ketamine, through its action in the brain, can actually lead to something called neuroplasticity, which is an increase in the amount of synapses and the effectiveness that these synapses communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, comp that's a part of how ketamine works to treat these conditions, basically to allow your brain to process stimuli in a different way, in a, in a kind of a, to somewhat oversimplify it. <laughs> An equally important part of it though is the psychotherapy side of things. And so ketamine opens you up to uh, um, what the therapist will have to tell you in terms of 
ways to act moving forward based off of previous events that you've had. Okay. And it can be a very effective modality to combine the two things. Does that work like a hypnosis? Because I guess if you were falling under a hypnosis, mm -hmm. then they would tell you something and then you somehow mm -hmm. not consciously knowing. Does it work something like that or no? That, it's an interesting question. And there's been some studies that have gone, gone into people like say, for example, that have PTSD. Right. Um, okay. If they actively go into the ketamine infusion trying to work through whatever that prior trauma was, right. is it more effective in, in, the, in the long term? And there is some evidence to prove that it is. And really how it works is um, with trauma therapy, you're not designed to forget the traumatic event. It's right. about acknowledging that it happened, but not letting it control your life. Okay. And ketamine is able to separate those two things, basically. Okay. So do you have an on-site uh, therapist, a psychotherapist? So we work with a therapist who went through a year-long training on ketamine-assisted psychotherapy. Okay. So she's specialty trained. She works virtually with patients. All right. um, so what you can expect is you come into the clinic. Um, it's just you and us and our RN, our team. And the treatment's really all about you and making this um, everything that, it, that you needed to be, bringing you into a comfortable, tranquil, spa-like environment. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're gonna come in and we're gonna talk to you briefly and then we'll set you up with the, um, in the recliner just as comfortable as possible mm -hmm. with an eye shade and, and uh, um, noise canceling, earphones, mm -hmm. um, playing kind of spa-like music. And so yeah, that's kind of the, what you can expect for the treatment when you come into the clinic. And then you will meet with the psychotherapist virtually the next day. Okay, so um, so you obviously need records from the individual that's coming in. So if they wanted the doctor to um, transfer the records over, would that be something they should do? Or do you have them just answer questions of, that's your own? Yeah, it's a combination of both. So it's, first, we have an initial free consultation. So it's no charge to the patient. We speak to them for 30 minutes to 45 minutes, getting a medical history from them, okay. making sure they're safe for ketamine, that it would be indicated for them. Um, and then if we feel like we would need outside records, our electronic health record system would allow us to basically request records ourselves. So it makes okay. it very easy for the patient so they don't have to go about trying to collect all this stuff for us. We can just okay. get it directly from their office. Perfect. That just makes it a lot easier for yeah. everybody for sure. Um, so let's talk about who is a good candidate and who isn't a good candidate. Yeah. So. I, <laughs> so Good. Basically, ketamine, we're not using this as a first-line treatment. It's for people that have tried and failed other modalities. Um, typically, let's say for depression, you've tried and failed two or three antidepressants, you've done talk therapy, and you're not getting substantial relief, or you're having intolerable side effects. Mm -hmm. Ketamine would then be indicated for you. People that it would not be indicated for are patients that have a history of epilepsy, so seizure disorder, mm -hmm. or patients that have a history of schizophrenia or mania. Okay. There's other small relative contraindications, but that's part of that initial consultation is us going over that yep. expansive list. Okay. But those are really the two major ones, seizure disorder and history of schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. So there was something on the list that I actually wanted to ask you about, it's mm -hmm. addictions. So what yeah. kind of addictions are we talking about? Drugs and alcohol? Yeah, sure. So, so yeah, I mean, you're the expert. Uh, no, we both we both do this equally. But yeah, so it's, some, it's like definitely a passion of mine. And so ketamine, you, it's one of those interesting things where um, it, it seems like a drug that you could be addicted to, but it can also treat addiction. Mm -hmm. And we see this with kind of other emerging psychedelics, psilocybin, MDMA, mm -hmm. how these things that could be addictive are actually being used to treat addiction. The mechanisms okay. of how that work. Mm -hmm are somewhat complicated, but ultimately we have real world clinical evidence to show that this works. Okay. And so we're using it to treat things like alcohol, um, tobacco cessation, um, opioid addiction is a primary indication for it okay. um, because those are things that are difficult to come off of and a, a fixed amount of ketamine infusions has been proven to actually improve people's ability to get off okay. those. So many of, many of the folks in our, um, you know, that are viewing this, you know, maybe they are suffering from addiction mm -hmm. and maybe they've tried the 12 step program and yeah. they've yeah. tried other things that really didn't work for them. So would that be a good candidate to come visit with you? Uh, for sure, okay. for sure. Um, the excellent thing about ketamine is we use it for patients that have been refractory to kind of the standard treatments that they've been trying. And so okay. let's say they have done the program and they have tried other things. Those are the patients that we really do believe that we can help. Okay. Um, we want patients to be able to have a support system outside. And so people that do the 12 steps and go to the meetings, that just adds to the efficacy. Mm -hmm. So okay. for sure, definitely. Okay. Uh, let's talk again about your facility and where it is located and how they get in touch with you. Now, uh, one thing that I'm wondering is many people always want to know about insurance and how that comes into play. 
is it covered in some capacity? So it's the ketamine treatment itself is not yet covered by most insurances. Some are starting to cover it, and I think others will get there with time sure. because the data does show that it really does help people. Um, what we're doing is we are having patients pay up front, and then we use our electronic medical record to generate a super bill that we will submit to the patient's insurance on their behalf, oh, okay. and they can expect to hopefully get a reimbursement. Gotcha. And it's not billing for the ketamine infusion. It's billing for the services like the uh, physician consult and the office visit and the IV placement. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're definitely able to get some reimbursement for patients um, using our EMR and submitting the super bills. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So when when somebody comes to visit you, how long is the consultation? So the consultation is, is virtual, the initial one. So oh, they can okay. do it from wherever they are. 30 to 45 minutes is about right. Okay. Um, then they will typically speak with our psychotherapist who will help them prepare for their first infusion. All right. Then they'll come to our office, which is in San Juan Capistrano. Um, and in that office, they can expect to be there for about 90 minutes to two hours. Okay. Um, 40 minutes of that is the infusion, and then mm -hmm. there's some processing time both before and afterwards. Okay. Um, and then they're driven home, typically by friend, family member, loved ones, things like okay. that. Now, this is an infusion, so it's mm -hmm. through a needle. Correct. Okay. And then afterwards, what should, should someone bring someone with them? Are they going to have a, a feeling that yeah. maybe they can't drive? Yeah. So we recommend that if patients are able to, to come with a support person, okay. somebody who's there to kind of help them get through the rest of the day, get okay. them home safely, and just be there for them. Um, they can expect for a couple hours after the infusion to maybe feel a little uneasy on their feet, maybe a little loopy, and you want to make sure you have someone there to help right. support you through that. Right. Well, this is really great information. I appreciate it. Very new to us here, and I, I'm happy that you were able to help us because, you know, many people have thrown in the towel with Western medicine. Yeah. And, and they don't know where to turn to, so we appreciate the information. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah. And if you want more information about the ketamine infusion from Renew, you can go to their website, which is renewketamineinfusion.com. We'll be right back.